Hi everyone, it's Alexis with Project Management Made Simple. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, what are the soft skills that you need as a project manager? So the first skill to have here is communication. Being able to effectively communicate across the various stakeholders that are impacted by the project. So whether you're speaking to the project team who is working on a particular task and need to understand better the details surrounding that task to provide the deliverable, or you're speaking to upper level management who wants to have a clear understanding of how this, this particular project fits in line with the strategy, or you're talking to the end user or the customer and they want to know the progress of the project. They want to know what their involvement needs to be as a part of the project. Being able to effectively communicate to these various parties is going to be an asset to you as a project manager. So the next skill to have here is integrity and honesty. When we're dealing with projects, we're dealing with a lot of uncertainty at times, some, probably something that hasn't been done before. We're also making assumptions. And so with that, sometimes things go off track. We may go over budget. We may go, you know, past the, the schedule that we have set forth. And so being able to have the integrity to be honest about these things when you're talking to the project sponsor and when you're talking to the project team and catering that message in a way that really, um, catering that message in a way that they can interpret and then actually do something about it is another thing that's going to be an asset to you as a project manager. Next skill is prioritization. I've actually been reading this book on essentialism or this book called essentialism and it's the art of pursuing less i think that's the, the the tagline the subline there and really in that it places an emphasis on the idea of prioritization and trade-offs and this idea that when you say yes to something you have to say no to a lot of things and in the case of project management and projects there can be no other better way to illustrate this than when we're thinking about things like the triple constraint. I have another video dedicated to it, but just to give kind of a, and I'll have that links below, just to give kind of a summary here, when we think of the triple constraint, we're thinking of what constraints. And constraints mean that really priorities go hand in hand with that. So we're talking about the scope, schedule, and budget. And typically, if you go front and center and ask a customer, hey, what's your priority? They may not know right away. And you'll have to listen in on those dialogues. And actually, I'll have a whole other video about how to determine the priorities of a project. But understand that being able to prioritize what is going to be the most important thing to do next and understanding how that fits in a line with uh, what the true triple constraint or rather what the true constraint is for the project is going to be very helpful for you as you move along in the project. So the next skill is going to be leadership. Being able to effectively communicate what the strategy is to the team, get buy-in on that strategy, and then on a day-to-day -day basis, being able to effectively remove impediments that may affect a team's progress is going to be what leadership looks like, especially in an agile environment, there's an emphasis on servant leadership. And so it's really empowering the team to make decisions on their own, you know, and being able to delegate things appropriately as a project manager, and then ultimately support them in those decisions and aid them in being able to complete the work that they have set forth. Being able to be an active listener is a skill that is going to help you when you're working with, again, the different, the different stakeholders that are affected by the project. So if you're working with a project team, listening for impediments, for any risks or issues that they're facing, to being able to complete a particular task, listening to your project sponsor, who's ultimately the person responsible for the budget on the project and, you know, ultimately the person that you're, you're accountable to on the project, understanding what their concerns may be, giving them consistent status uh, reports so that they can be informed, talking to your end users or to your, your ultimate customer and being able to understand what their needs are and what, cha what challenges they may be facing. So being able to switch your ear in terms of how you're listening to and what you're listening to from these different stakeholders is very helpful in being able to have a successful project. Organization skills, very important. Being able to organize all of the details surrounding a project. When we think about 
the knowledge areas and think about the scope, the schedule, budget, quality, risks, all these different knowledge areas. We're thinking of a lot of components to a project. And so being able to effectively organize these in a way such that you can be able to easily access the information if we're talking about working with the vendor. We know that we need to access, you know, our procurement um, our procurement archive, wherever that is. If we're talking about requirements, we need to be able to access our scope archive. And you, you know, that archive may be different. You know, in my world, the archive, I'm just using archive kind of to simplify it really, is going to be JIRA for us. When we're talking about scope, when we're talking about task management, all of that is handled in JIRA. If we're talking about procurement and contracts, we have a folder structure yeah. or repository that we use to house that information. So, so being able to have an organization structure where you're able to effectively organize these various components of a project is going to be very handy. Being compassionate to your team. If they're struggling with something, if they're overloaded with work, seeing how you can jump in there and, and help remove some of that stress, being compassionate to your users. Ultimately, when you're, you know, when you're initially starting and gathering requirements and understanding what their pain points are, listen to them. Sometimes in the software world, you can have what's called gold plating, where essentially the project team adds on a bunch of features that the customer effectively doesn't need. So being able to be compassionate and, and listen, again, going back to that active listening, listen for what the user is saying that they have issues and then working together to see how to resolve that issue together. Listening to your project sponsor. Again, this is the person who's footing the bill for this project. So, you know, you want to be able to be compassionate and understand where they're coming from, you know, in terms of their expectations and things that need to be delivered to them as well. So the last skill I would say here, and by no means is this list exhaustive, is discernment. Discernment meaning having the ability to judge a situation, kind of do a little gut check and see if that actually matches what you're being told that that situation is. So if you're working, for instance, with a vendor and they're telling you that everything's going great, ensuring that you have systems set up in place beforehand so that you can actually measure if what they're saying actually matches you know, the reality of the situation. And then being able to have discernment to say, even if the metrics all fit and what they're saying is great, are there things that we're not considering that we should consider that may impact the reality of the situation? So constantly checking in with your gut, using your experience on previous projects to better discern what is going on and if there's changes or something that needs to be shifted so that you can keep the project on track. This was a video answering the question, what are the soft skills that are needed for a project manager? I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next video.